Well, another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. You know, we've been doing some off-road stuff, and the response from you guys has just been incredible. People really seem to love it. So uh, I thought we'd do some more. Now, behind me is what appears to be a 1971 Ford Bronco, except it doesn't say Ford. It says Icon. So what's that all about? Let's find out. Let's meet Jonathan Ward. He's the CEO and lead designer of Icon. Jonathan, how you doing? I'm good, Jay. Thanks for the attention. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, I loved the Bronco. It came out in 66, and it was pretty much like a Mustang you could just go crazy in the woods with. There was no airbag. There was nothing. It didn't weigh anything, and you can get the big V8 in it. Yeah. And uh, they were a huge hit. And uh, it was meant to compete, obviously, with the Jeep of the period, and did very well. Now, tell us exactly what we have here. Would resto mod be a correct term? Yeah, I think that's fair. So, mm -hmm. I mean, basically, guys like us that remember them when we were kids mm -hmm. and think they're great, we run out and we buy one and try and revisit our youth, and then we get tired of the three on the tree and right. the juice breaks, and yeah. about two miles later, we're over it. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is kind of the, like with all Icon products, the idea is it's sort of classic transportation revisited in a modern context. So we kind of mix it up a bit. Is this a totally new body? No, it's still the original sheet metal, 100%. Okay. So basically what I do is scour the nation to find rust-free, uncut Fender original Broncos, right. which is a story in and on itself. Mm -hmm. And then we take it apart and kind of re-envision it and evolve it with modern powertrain and suspension and brakes and ergonomics and all that fun stuff. Right, now obviously these headlights never had were around in uh, 1966. Yeah, I'm a sucker for diodes. So yeah, yeah. all the lighting on the truck is all light emitting diodes. Basically when Ford made the original, mm -hmm. they were conscious to the business ethic of let's grab parts and pieces from the Mustang right. or the Falcon and, and make it roll. Whereas I only build like 20, 30 trucks a year. So we've got the liberty to be a little bit more creative and kind of re-envision that stuff. So, for example, the rear view mirrors, the door handles, the lock pins, the side emblems, the front nose, the grill, the tailgate, uh, the side marker guards and all that. Uh, Camillo Pardo from Ford. Sure. Cam's a good buddy, and he was my co-designer on this. Well, so Camillo we, is the guy who designed the Ford GT. Correct. And did yeah. a great job. Yeah, he's a genius. So, like, it was a good opportunity for us as we got to know the original to kind of basically write a poo list and come right. up with the things that we could re-envision. Here's so, a question. Was the original Bronco four-wheel drive? Or yeah, did, yeah, oh, part-time. Yeah. Oh, it was. I so we're part-time cool. shift on the fly, four-wheel drive. Gotcha. But again, in, in a modern version, so we run like the Atlas II twin-stick T case that's super burly, and we run the 2012 Mustang GT Coyote 5-liter V8 from the Mustang. Okay, Brilliant so this has motor. way more power than the oh, Bronco yeah. back in the day. And yeah. a lot more stop two, stop yeah. tech, six pistons in the front, four piston rears, and uh, coil suspension with Fox Racing and Eibach, and a lot of like little geek out details. To yeah. me, it's all about the details. Yeah, that was my favorite. That's my favorite thing is doing the resto mod thing. You've been to this website, you've seen my Ford Galaxy, which looks <laughs> period correct. Look at the drilled pedals and all of this. Very nice. It's impressive. So obviously off-road and performance must be pretty incredible, huh? Totally. Uh, and we're running about 12 inches of uh, travel up and down. But now we have 50-50 weight balance, whereas the original trucks were severely nose-heavy. Yeah, yeah. So we cheat in the rear. We're running a Dana 60 Pro Rock high pinion rear axle okay. by Dynatrack, which helps with the weight balance. Very hard to get this monster 5.0 into this engine bay. You know, the original Broncos were actually designed to be a six banger. Right. And then the K5 Blazer came out and everyone at Ford went, oh no, what have we done? And quickly retrofitted right, the Mustang I 8. Gotcha. So someone would bring, essentially, maybe, could I bring my Bronco to you? Certainly. And you could redo yep. it or, or you could just buy it and then... I Either see. way. I wish you'd bring your own because it's getting really hard for me to find them. We're running ABS Master, which is cool too, so there's no vacuum source right. uh, dependence yeah. for the power assist. Yeah, and I like the paint too. This this is, seems to be the new thing, this flat matte paint. I'm, yeah, I'm anti-bling. I'm torn on it on high performance cars, but in this vehicle it looks perfect to me. And it adds again to the utility ethic, because yeah, then yeah. your brush scratches and all that, it's right. a lot more, lot more resilient. It looks almost like a brushed aluminum finish. It's very attractive. Let's look underneath this thing. All right, so in the rear, you now have- you know, I like any car I can work on without having to jack it up. So triangulated four-link right. rear with Fox Racing and Eibach coilovers, 
tunable sway bars. Now, I know you have Zerk fittings on here. Yes, I, sir. I, I would think those would be lifetime bearings. You still have to grease them, huh? You do. You know, most guys want to run Himes there, but right. I'm just, I'm only like Himes on a race car. Yeah, and they make your molars vibrate. Yeah, yeah. So these are called Johnny Joints, which right. were pioneered by John Curry, who's kind of a legend in our world. And you got a big skid plate here. Yeah, an early integral skid plate. These are yeah. all 250 wall, DOM, US made steel, all TIG right, welded. Right. That's done by Art Morrison, who is just such a legend. Yeah, he's a legendary guy, he's isn't he? Oh, so many times we do these resto mod deals and you meet people and the thing looks great on the outside and you get under the hood and you go, oh, oh my God. Yeah, it looks like it's, uh, but and this looks pretty substantial. And what does this weigh? Uh, this weighs in at about 3,900 pounds. Okay, not too bad. No, just not about two tons. So yeah. a little heavier than a stock Bronco. We're within about 100, 150 pounds. Oh, is that right? I, I just assumed because they were, I remember them, they were so flimsy. Yeah. And you had this 289 and a door that kind of rattled when you shut it and it seemed to be this thick. That right? was a big challenge for us is getting rid of all of those rattles and yeah, ambient yeah. noises and insulating and dynamat and on and on and on. Yeah, because back in the day you could sell a car like a Bronco or a Jeep and it rattled because the guy would go, it's a Jeep! And this is not an inexpensive vehicle, is it? What would this cost? Yeah, no, my stuff's fairly brutal because I am such a maniac and it's also a big for me to kind of revive classic American. Right skills so it's all u.s made all u.s products right and my broncos go from about 150 to about 200,000. okay very cool let's see and then of course the hard tops are movable yeah all that so yeah, yeah yeah full yeah. convertible and then we do a soft top or we do a half cab top as right, well right. and this has a five speed in it correct yeah we're running an ace and warner wow uh, ax15 we also do the ford uh, automatic with overdrive what do most people prefer i would think the stick huh it's almost 50 50. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. right down the middle. It depends on the model. And notice that that's a nice Yeah, these cool real. little power steps. Yeah, you can't power really step. see right now, yeah. but they light up. They got a little dial. You know what I like on. about this power step? It actually is pretty quick. You and know, it's I've not a, emasculating when yeah, it's. Some hidden. of them you get this thing, you go, ah! It's <laughs> yeah. in the leg, so that comes out pretty quick. Yeah, it's a good product. Pretty cool. Let's see what we got around the back here. Again, the, in the details. So oh, I see. That's nice. Tire carry, and then it's got a CNC ramp and an aircraft pin, so it won't come back and beat up your tailgate. Yeah. And then we've added, you know, like you had noted, on the original trucks, these were wide open panels to the exterior. Right, right. Wheel, and just like going down the road was just insane. So now we, we, we found this, you know, you've seen this like on uh, elevators and office right, buildings. Right. So it's laser cut stainless, copious layers of Dynamat inside. Yeah. Yeah, Dynamat's incredible. We use that on everything. Yeah. And like these are now all gas shocks. The right. original had those elbow things that right. rattled incessantly and drove me nuts. Nice pin there. The yeah, then we get trust. some nice hidden storage compartments yeah, there. Yeah. And then we CNC all this hardware so it's not that conventional clamp right. where you're going to murder your oh, fingers. Look at this. Very cool. Yeah, it was little, kind of a wasted space, so we took advantage. Little tool boxes here on yeah. both sides. Boy, that's nice detail. And then the glass is another weird detail. That's actually architectural glass that you'd see on a skyscraper, you know, with a reflective coat. Mm -hmm. But what we do is we see and see it and then temper it so it's cool for automotive. Okay. But it kind of added to this sort of monochromatic uh, right. funkiness to the truck. All those dash panels are all CNC'd out of stainless. Yeah. We actually partnered with Nike on the development of this truck, right, Nike right. and Ford. So they have an insane machine shop that even you would be impressed by. Very cool. Yeah. I think it's time to take this thing for a ride. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm in some 60s action movie. What'd you really do, Bronco? Have drums all the way around? Yeah, yeah. yeah and they it. didn't even have power assist. Yeah, right, yeah. right. It actually rides very nicely. I don't, it's not. Yeah, for what it is, for a solid yeah, axle. Yeah. Brakes are incredible in this thing because you got a lot of tire too, so you got a lot of surface area. Yeah. You know, it's funny, this is so opposite of what I'm used to driving. But you know, it's kind of fun. You get a different view of the world up here. The air's a little cleaner up here. <laughs> Four wheel guys really just beat the heck out of their vehicles. I mean, just take them out and thrash them, you know, which is kind of the opposite of what I do. I like to drive my stuff fast and have fun with it, but I don't abuse it. But this is meant to be abused, isn't it? Oh, yeah. This is a vehicle you just want to take out and slap around and crash into things and jump it. Yeah, jump it. Very, very cool. You don't <laughs> jump the Bugattis? Don't jump the Bugattis, no. <laughs> You've got air conditioning and modern stereo disc brakes. Your speedometer, all your gauges are in this pod over here. Got lights, wipers, fan, vent, and temperature. Oh, I see. And then my nice. AC vents we source from Cessna, so they're quality anodized right. aluminum instead of the plastic. Here's something I haven't seen in years: wind wings. Smokers used to love those. You just kind of do that. You throw your cigarette out. You start a forest fire. You keep driving. Got 
I'll admit it's a lot of fun to drive. You know, I wish there was some off-road. The only time anybody in LA goes off-road is when they get a DUI. <laughs> And what do we have here? These are your uh, on-the-fly, you can just... Yeah, so this gives you, it's unique to our design with the Atlas II, but that gives you independent control over the front and rear axle. Oh, I see. So in a really severe off-road environment, with these locking differential controls combined right. with that, you can focus the power to a wide combination. Now, in the original Bronco, it would have been a little nose-heavy, huh? Oh, like driving a seesaw. But uh, it's got tremendous power. What are you looking at, about 400 horse? Yeah, right on the nose. 400 horse and a lot of torque. You know, any car that makes you smile is okay with me. It's a funny go around a corner, you think you're gonna tip over, but it's actually quite stable. Doesn't lean much at all. Once you go into fifth gear at 60, you're barely turning, barely turning, what, 1800 RPM. Yeah. So I imagine gas mileage wouldn't be too bad. No, it's pretty good. This 4-cam variable valve timing 5.0 yeah. is really efficient. It's kind of Trump and GM's efficiency on the V8s. And what is the rear end ratio on this? Well, on the FJs, we did 409s, but right. on these, we actually did 488. You know, most of the cars I drive, I'm used to staring at somebody's license plate. In fact, I've pulled up to you around town over the years and had to look pretty far down to get to That's you. That's right. Well, people have been looking down on me for a long time. <laughs> Well, there you have it. That's the uh, iconic Bronco and some of their other products as well. We're going to do some more with these guys as uh, the website continues. Let us know if you'd like to see more off-road stuff. Maybe we can uh, maybe we can do a situation where we can find some, take these cars some place where we can really have some fun with them. But uh, let us know what you think. Hey, see you next week. Bye-bye.